It's a white vehicle. We like to actually template. Um, number one, it's metallic, it's directional. You need to make sure that you're templating in a certain direction. You'll see certain vehicles driving down the road and or on the internet where there's a certain panel, like let's say the door is the same, the door is the same, and this is the same, and then the fender is a different color. That's because they didn't take into account that the metallic shifts in a certain direction and or that the color shift is in a certain direction and you have to you have to install that. Oh, as well. I see. So this one, we're taking that into account. It's a hexus dome. Um, we don't know that it's directional, but it's metallic, so we don't want to take any chances. So we're, what I'm doing right now is actually just getting this side portion templated out. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to cut each one of these panels and just get it rolled up. We've been doing this for years since we started the inception of the company. This is the actual correct way to do it, to make sure that you get coverage around these portions. You'll see some people, um, and we do it on very rare occasions, depending upon the, the vehicle. Um, but in this occasion, um, it's white, so we really need to pre-template every single thing. Uh, when I say on rare occasions, uh, to give you an example, like livery wraps that are only going to be on for maybe two, three, four weeks for like a rally or something like that. Right. We'll do like a one-piece install. Okay. Just because the design is so intricate, it's so hard to get everything to line up, especially with those hard grooves and things yeah. like that on Porsche, you know, rear ends and things like that. So Porsches. It's really a <laughs> yeah. That's really just a, a rare instance. But on the, all the color changes, we template so we can get into these portions here. Ah, right I see. here, this beautiful line. So actually, this is a natural body line, so we're gonna to wanna to follow that anyways and make sure that we get full coverage, right? Yeah. Okay. And then we have over here, I saw you took the sensors. Yeah, um, so we took the sensors out. Um, again, everything is kind of per the vehicle. Like on Teslas, you know, we've kind of experienced that we don't really wanna take the, the sensors out of those. A lot of our, we wrap so many of them, we have, you know, obviously a lot of, uh, a lot of work experience on them, so we can, it's like that insurance company. Which one is it? Allstate? Yeah, or something. What is it? Mayhem. Mayhem. Yeah, right? Mayhem. Yeah. Because we're seeing the thing or two. Yeah. On these Teslas, you know, you don't want to, from year to year, you don't want to take those sensors off. You just want to kind of wrap over them because those are very, very intricate systems on Teslas. Right. I and mean, it's a full technology car. It's not really an automotive company. It's a tech company making automotive. Right. Well, I just know that all people had questions, you know, it's like these, the little dots, you know, yeah, what do you sure. do with them? Yeah, so in, sure. in this so case, we take these off and then we, uh, we actually have a plotter and we'll actually take the exact size and we'll plot it out and put those on the actual sensors themselves. But this allows us to get in there and we don't have any water or seepage or anything like that. Gotcha. Really, really good. This portion is going to go, uh, the Sherwood green and then this portion is going to go black. So oh, okay, nice. The grill and everything as well. So it'll look really, really good. That's going to look really cool. This one are going to go black as well um, because the window trim is actually gloss black, so that'll look really, really good. Perfect. Um, but yeah, we're going to get this stuff templated out. This smells like paint. Green paint? Does it smell like green? Like, you know, green highlighters when you were so a kid? So some of these, some of these actual, so obviously this is a, this is a color change film. There's a difference between a printed film, right? And a color change film. If you want to zoom in there, you can kind of see there's a little bit of digitization almost. And oh, this is okay. full print, right? Interesting. So this, and this is printed on a 3M control tech, right? So this is a hexus film. It's pigmented. The difference here is, is this starts out as a white film. We print it and then we over laminate it. You see ah, the difference there, yeah. right? This portion, this is pigmented. That's why you have no edges or anything like that. So this starts out as a gel consistency and then it's poured down on a huge, basically oh, belt line and then it's heated out and then they cap it right so that's how pigmented vinyl works and there's different thicknesses and things like that but uh yeah it's, it's pretty incredible stuff when you get an actual film like this or flexi shield paint protection film flexi shield paint protection film which is cosmetic it offers the best of both worlds right so it has cosmetic color change and it has paint protection film it's you know a little bit higher price than both of those you know than mm -hmm. a wrap and or your traditional paint protection film because it requires the breakdown of a traditional color change but gives you the protection uh right. you know obviously a paint protection film so but with that being said that has real paint in it that's crazy that has real paint in it so and and of course hexus actually hexus smells hexus smells like it has <laughs> that's pretty cool you know, so actually, i don't know if it i don't know if it does i'll have to do some research into it but it actually does. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we have a bigger table coming right now, too. So oh, nice. Yeah, this is a 10-foot table, and we have about a hundred and we have a hundred and forty-six foot table coming right oh, now. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Sweet. So this right here, you'll see here, you have to look really close. I mean, it's so, there's a line. You see this line? Let's see if I can get it. You see that line? Oh, wow. 
So it's like a black lid. I mean, it's so small. It's, I mean, you have to, with the naked eye, you have to actually know what you're looking at. You see it? it looks almost yes, like yes, as if I it do. was spiced together yeah, or something, right? So that happens during the pigmentation process. It could be one of the rollers or something like that. But the way that we're having to do this, we called the client and we said, hey, look, you know, we contacted the manufacturer. The manufacturer said, hey, um, we unfortunately don't have any more of this material in the world. So we can offer you a full refund, but um, we can't get you an extra roll, right? So we called the client and we said, hey, look, you know, let's take a look at this. The client came in, they looked at it and they said, go ahead, let's, let's go ahead and install it, right? And as you can tell from the naked eye, it's so, oh, yeah, yeah, it's you know, super hard it's just something that we want to make notice of because we don't want to take this out of the box, just go ahead and make a decision for our client on, without consulting our client. Right. We want to consult the client, figure out if they're okay with it. If they're okay with it, then we'll move ahead with the install. But also at the same time, we do want to let the manufacturer know. That way they know what role this came from. That way they can narrow it down. Is there a printer that has something that's wrong with it or you know is there a roller that has something wrong with it that way this isn't a continuing issue for other roles that, that come in the future right so it's all as much as we buy material from them it's also up to us to you know of course inform these guys on issues like this and things like that it's all about communication right so and quality so, control yeah and quality control on on both ends right so but you can see this right here right? yeah i'm hoping and they can see it on the camera here it's really it's, it's like it's like you can so lose minute. it it's but so minute, anyway. especially in the metallic. It's really hard. Yeah. You know? If it was like a flat, like um, we actually had it happen on a, we actually had it happen on a uh, on a what was it? It was like a Smurf blue, mm. like the gloss. Nissan? No, I forgot. This was years ago. It was like a gloss Smurf blue or something. That color, like that blue right there. But um, and that was extremely noticeable. Mm. That was extremely noticeable. So. I can see that. Yeah. So he chops it up into the different rolls, right? Mm -hmm. And so he labels it. Mm -hmm. And so those are each of the different parts of the car, right? Yeah, so it's going to be it's going to be like this one's front bumper, rear bumper, and then we have trunk. I gotcha. Uh, side. So that so, kind of makes it efficient to like in terms of like actually maintaining the right amount of material per. Correct. And especially with the way that they template it, um, especially with a car like this, you can't just go ahead and lay one big side down, but he puts enough bleed and it saves us on material because then we're not just cutting door, door, side skirt, um, quarter panel and eight pillar. We're doing the whole thing in one. And then we're using the fact that we have so much bleed that we kind of shift it around and start cutting out. So like we'll move it to the right a little bit, cut out the door and then we'll shift everything back to the left and then we'll do everything else as well. Got it. Give up, give up.